What's good, peeps? Team Money up in the heezy. Happy Thursday night. Coming to you guys live tonight. Well, not live, uh, just coming to you um, for a late night um, unboxing. And I did get a nice package in the mail today from what appears to be Scream Factory. I am not exactly sure what's in this box because I've pre-ordered so many different things from Scream Factory over the last few months that I don't know. Uh, so we're going to find out together. Um, and I got one little thing here from Cavity Colors, which I'm very excited to share with you. And then, um, just briefly, uh, I went back to uh, Barnes & Noble yesterday and picked up a few more movies from the Criterion sale. I actually went in there looking for 1984. Oh, camera. Um, and uh, it was not there. My Barnes & Noble's a little bit late to the game I noticed with the newer releases but um I grabbed some other things uh, that I had not seen and wanted to grab from the collection so I'll show you those and also one other thing I got from Amazon yesterday so let's get into the update need a little bit of wacky <laughs> tobacco <laughs> Um, woo! All right, so let's get into it. So first up, we have In the Heat of the Night, starring Rod Steger and Sidney Poitier, I believe, is how the proper pronunciation is of his name. Never seen this movie from 1967. Sounds really good, though. Um, yeah. 4K digital restoration of the film. So we got that one. I was debating whether or not I was going to read the uh, synopsis, but I'm not. Then I grabbed The Ballad of Narayama, which sounded really cool. Uh, in this haunting, kabu inflected version of a Japanese folk legend set in a remote mountain village where food is scarce and tradition dictates that citizens who have reached their 70th year must be carried to the summit of Mount Naroma and left to die. Oh, it reminded me of Midsommar there for a second. Uh, the sacrificial elder at the center of the tale is Orin, a dignified and dutiful woman who spends her dwindling days securing the happiness of her loyal widowed son with a respectable new wife. Filmed almost entirely on cunningly designed studio sets in brilliant color and widescreen, The Ballad of Narayama is a stylish and vividly formal work from Japan's cinematic golden age, directed by the dynamic Kaisuki Kinoshita. Uh, and this is from 1958. It is in color. And it's in Japanese with English subtitles, so that's awesome. And then uh, this movie, The Virgin Spring, of course, by Ingmar Bergman. Um, many say this is his uh, best film, but others argue that it's not. I've never seen it, so um, yeah. It's winner of the Academy Award for Best Foreign Language Film. Uh, it's a harrowing tale of faith, revenge, and savagery in medieval Sweden. 1960 black and white. So finally picked that one up for the old Crit Collection. And last but not least for the stuff that's already opened, we have Critters Attack. And I'm really excited to check this movie out. Um, yeah, I like the Critters flicks a lot. And surprisingly, every person that I've talked to that has seen this movie say that it's really good. And cool story, the girl who is in, um, I think it's called We Sell the Dead. It was the movie that I gave away from... from um, from Scream Factory uh, and uh, Fulci, Frank Fulci won. I forget the name of it. We Bury the Dead or something like that. Uh, the little girl who kind of stole the show in that movie for me is in this again. And the only reason why I know that is because I posted a picture of this on Instagram uh, and she liked it. So that was really cool. Um, she, I thought she was a great little actress or young young actress. Uh, she's a younger girl. So uh, Dee Wallace is also in this movie as well. So... Yeah, uh, cool. So, a surprisingly good Critters. I mean, the Critters movies are all kind of B-movie, good good old, like, popcorn monster flicks. So, I'm excited. If it's a solid film in that respect, I'm definitely going to like it. 
Next, we will get into the criteria. I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, cavity colors package, which is a pin that I had ordered. Sorry, I'm trying to find my razor blade, and it is nowhere around me. So we're gonna have to just cut this open. Top. Hope for the best. And uh, this is a, another Return of the Living Dead. So we're on to Return of the Living Dead bookmarks, which is cool. Um, hopefully, I'll get enough to make a fan. Uh, more Cavity Colors Monster Club stickers, and also this beautiful Marty Slaughter High pin. So cool. I love this movie so much. Slaughter High is one of my favorite 80 slashers by far. It's so cool. I love this movie. And that's awesome. That is so cool. So, really stoked. Sorry, trying to get a good picture of it for you guys, but it's just not picking up on this camera. But I think you guys get the idea. There we go. So, awesome. Love it. All right. Last but not least, a package from Freak Bags. I found my razor blade, too. All right. Let's see. So, yeah, this could be one of many things. Let's see. Looks to be a special edition release, and I'm not going to. Oh, there's a movie in here too. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. Let me just make sure that there wasn't a movie in here. No, we're good. Okay. So first up, we have the Leopard Man. Um, I had pre-ordered this back when I ordered Strays as well. This is a, I think, 50s, um, 1943 uh, movie that I've never seen. Dennis O'Keefe and Dennis O'Keefe, Margot. Uh, Dennis O'Keefe, Margot. Yeah, <laughs> it's one person. Sorry. All right. Uh, let's see. A film that uh, as ugh, that's as much a mystery as a horror film. And which has become just justly famous for a tense chase scene. Um, so yeah, 1943. A savage killer is on the loose. Is it man, beast, or both behind a string of savage maulings and murders? An escaped leopard provides the catalyst for a foray into fear. In which a cemetery is the rendezvous for death and love. And a closed door heightens rather than hides the horror of a young girl's fate. The Leopard Man once again teams producer Val Luton with director Jacques Tournier, Torner or whatever, Torner. Uh, this thriller stars Dennis, by the way, that's the director of the original Cat People, uh, stars Dennis O'Keefe, Margot, sorry, is Dennis O'Keefe somebody different and Margot is just like a stage name maybe? I have no clue. Uh, and Gene Brooks. So we have the Leopard Man, and that's cool. I like how Screen Factory has been doing this with their some of their older releases. They'll just put like a a uh, you know a large shot in the middle, so you get a whole image, which I think is cool. Very 50s. So awesome. I like the disc artwork on that too. It's pretty rad. Um, so cool. The Leopard Man making its way on Blu-ray. Thank you to the fine folks at Screen Factory. Now we are going to get into this. And I still haven't looked to see what it is, but I think I know what it might be, so let's dig in. Yes siree Bob! So what we have here is the Humanoids from the Deep Steelbook, limited steelbook that uh, Scream Factory has put out. I dug this artwork, this newly commissioned artwork for this, um, so... I wanted to swoop it up. Also, I would collect their stuff anyway. You guys know that. So, but I really did dig it, and I also dig the uh, the um, the other two steel books that they announced. Um, I think they're Roger Corman films as well uh, that are going to be coming out really soon. Um, I ordered pre. -order, I think I pre-ordered those two. But anyways, Humanoids from the Deep, classic movie. Love it. Um, and this is a new 4K scan of the uncut international version. So if you own the uh, standard Blu-ray from Shout Factory that was released 
uh, prior to Scream Factory, um, you can now upgrade to a new 4K transfer. That's awesome. I think that's great that they're doing new transfers uh, for movies that they've already... You know, if you're going to put out a movie that you had already done, done put out... Um, <laughs> Might as well roll with the with the slang there. Um, why not make it a better transfer? I think that's a necessity, really. Limited quantity. I'm sure there's plenty, though, because all of these steelbooks that they have been releasing are limited, and they're all still available, I think. Uh, but this movie's classic. If you guys haven't seen it, you should definitely check it out. It's a great creature feature. 1980. Um, I love it. Um... And trying to see a new two force case can of the film, Making of Humanoids from the Deep Featuring Interviews with Executive Producer Roger Corman, Editor Mark Goldblatt, blah, blah, blah. Leonard Malton interviews Roger Corman. Uh, Something evil is happening in the sleepy fishing village of Noyo. Fish like humanoid creatures spawned by mutant DNA begin rising from the ocean looking to spawn with the local women. Scientist Susan Drake, along with local fisherman Jim Hill, uh, looks for the cause of this invasion of creatures from the ocean floor. When the annual Salmon Festival begins, unwanted guests are about to crash the festivities. Also starring Vic Morrow and Cindy Weinthrob from uh, The Prowler, awesome, and Dennis Gallick from Don't Answer the Phone. Awesome little uh, mini, er, you know, <clears throat> what's the word? Uh, cast. Um, <laughs> supporting cast. Uh, the film features an early score from Academy Award winner, composer James Horner, who did Avatar and Braveheart, wow. And a special effects by Rob Bottin, who is amazing, who did The Thing. He worked a lot with, I think, um, uh, Walking Dead, Greg Nicotero, Nicotaro, Nicotaro, Nicotero, Nicotaro, Nica fucking Taro, Tiro Taro. But anyways, Rob Bottin is the man, The Thing, um, and he's the, uh... Effects dude behind this one from 1980. So, uh, that's awesome. I feel like there was an older f Humanoids from the Deep, but maybe not. I, I, for some reason, I, I'm getting this confused with another creature feature from the 50s, and I can't remember the name of it, but... Um, Forbidden something they're going to be putting out. Uh, there's two more. Oh, I'm sorry that my memory is so bad. Forbidden Planet, I think. I don't know. Uh, sorry guys can't think of it but anyways awesome go pick this up I would recommend it it's beautiful it really is cool I like this cover artwork a lot and uh, I don't know if there's a booklet because it doesn't say in the special features but I'm not going to open this and judging by previous um, um uh, Scream Factory Steelbook releases, they don't usually have anything. They're pretty bare bones. Uh, so, yes, that's cool. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, you have a great night, and I will talk to you probably very soon. Peace.